Chapter 27 Selina opened her mouth in a terrified scream. I'm trapped, she realized. Danny has me trapped up here. He stared silently at her. Danny, she cried. Danny? Now she noticed that he wasn't moving, that his eyes were only half open, that he didn't blink. Selina gaped at him, her brain spinning in confusion. Danny? His jaw slid open and he uttered a soft moan. She raised the beam of light to Danny's face and leaned closer to him. He sat propped against the cabinet, his arms and legs tied by thick ropes. An ugly purple bruise spread across his forehead, and his blonde hair was caked and matted with blood. Danny, Selina gasped. What happened? Who did this? Danny's eyes fluttered open. Selina, he murmured. What's going on? she demanded. Who tied you up? You asked me to come, he choked out. Huh? I what? Selina cried, confused. What happened to you? Who did this? I don't know, Danny groaned. I came up here because you told me to. You said to wait. I don't remember any more. Why did you ask me to wait for you up here? I, I didn't, Selina stammered. I didn't call you. Untie me, he pleaded. Please? Of course, Selina replied. She reached for the ropes. Her hand stopped in midair. Danny couldn't be the son, could he? No way he hid himself over the head and tied himself up. She stared at him. His eyes had closed. Blood dripped thickly from the cut under his hair down the side of his face. Selina caught her breath. The stalker had planned to kill Danny. Danny, not Katie. And Selina must have interrupted him before he could finish. I saved him, she realized. I saved Danny. Then she felt her heart slide up to her throat. The stalker tried to kill Danny. Selina showed up unexpectedly. The creep ran away and hid. Hid somewhere in the auditorium? Was he still here somewhere? We've got to get out of here, Selina cried. She tugged frantically at the heavy, coiled ropes. They didn't budge. I'll find something to cut you loose, she told him. Clippers. In the corner, Danny murmured. Selina stumbled to the corner and searched frantically for the clippers. They're not here, she cried. Over the door, Danny choked out. Selina felt above the door. No, no clippers. Nothing she could use to cut Danny free. She began to paw through their props on the lowest shelf. And then she heard something. Another sound. The sound of footsteps echoing on the stage below. It's him, she breathed. Who? Danny whispered. Shh! Selina stopped moving, straining to hear more. The footsteps moved closer, right below them. She heard a metallic clang, the sound of a foot on the ladder. Another clanging footstep. Selina switched off the flashlight. She felt sick with fear. In the darkness, she crawled back to Danny and huddled next to him. Be quiet, she whispered urgently. Don't make a sound. The steps continued up the ladder. Steady, confident steps. Then a long silence. The door creaked open. In the doorway... Nearly lost in the darkness stood a large figure, the Stalker. Chapter 28 Selina froze and stared into the dark doorway, and heard a familiar voice. Selina, is that you? Katie, Katie's voice. Katie, Selina cried, almost sobbing with relief. What's going on? Katie asked. What are you doing up here? I can't explain now. We're in danger, Selina told her. Did you see anyone down there? No, Katie said. I didn't look. I left my math book up here. I was doing some problems during breaks in rehearsal. Should I look for someone else? No, never mind, Selina cried. Danny is here. He's hurt. We have to get help. Huh? Katie uttered a startled cry. She switched on an overhead light. Selina blinked at the sudden brightness. She saw that Katie was wearing her black stagehands outfit. She carried a heavy metal flashlight. Danny's really hurt, Selina told Katie. We've got to untie him and get help. Katie's face twisted in confusion. Why is he up here? The sun, Selina explained. Now that she could see the ropes, it was easier to get them untied. The sun tried to kill him. I think he's still here somewhere. Come on, Katie. Help me untie him. Why? Katie asked. If he's tied up, he can't cause trouble. Don't you get it? Selina cried impatiently. Danny isn't the son. I found another note. The son said he was going to kill someone close to me. He meant Danny. 
but I thought he meant you. No, he didn't mean me, Katie replied softly, calmly. Katie, help me, Selena cried. Danny needs a doctor. Don't worry about Danny, Katie soothed her. He won't cause you any more trouble now. Selena, Danny moaned. Selena tugged at the ropes around his arms. I said forget Danny, Katie screamed. She crossed the room in two steps, raised her arm, and brought the flashlight down hard on Danny's head. His eyes rolled up. His head slumped onto his chest. Katie! Selena gasped in horror. Why? Katie pushed a pile of costumes to the floor and settled herself on one of the shelves, facing Selena. I want to talk about you and me, Selena, Katie explained, her eyes burning into Selena's. I want to talk about our friendship. Selena felt a shiver roll down her back. We can talk about anything you want, she answered carefully, but let's do it down on the ground. I'm very comfortable up here, Katie replied coldly. Aren't you? You should be. We're together again, the way we used to be. Something buzzed at the back of Selena's mind. She pushed it away, tried to think clearly. What do you mean? Selena asked. It's just like the old days. Just you and me, best friends. Katie and Selena doing everything together. Selena sank onto the floor next to Danny, stared at his unconscious form. Katie had done that. Katie had hit him. We're still best friends. Not the way we used to be, Katie insisted. You used to put me first, Selena, the way I always did with you. Katie, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Selena watched in dismay as Katie reached into her pocket. She pulled out a shiny piece of paper and held it up for Selena to see. Selena gasped. No. Oh, no. Katie held a sheet of stickers. Stickers of the sun. Chapter 29 Where, where did you get those? Selena whispered. They're mine, Katie replied, though I did give a few of them away, but you already know that. I don't understand, Selena said. Katie, you? Katie nodded. Yes, it was Katie, good old Katie, but I knew you'd never suspect me. I knew you'd think it was some guy who was madly in love with you. Selena felt too shocked to speak. Katie was her best friend. She couldn't possibly be the son. Those notes, they were written by a guy, she protested. Katie sneered at her. You're so easy to fool. I made them sound as if a guy was writing them. I knew you'd never question it. Every guy has to fall for you, right? But, Katie, you're so conceited, Selena. It was so easy to convince you that a stalker was following you around. Even when there was an accident, I could make you believe some crazy guy did it. I mean, a ladder falls down and you think you have a stalker. All I had to do was put a sticker on it. It's obvious all you care about is having guys fall at your feet. That's not true, Selena cried. Yeah, right, Katie sneered. Do you have any idea how I felt for the past two years, Selena? Do you know how it feels to have your best friend treat you like a servant? I never did that, Selena protested. You're still my best friend. We were in the drama club together, and... Of course we were in a drama club together, Katie yelled. Like I had a choice. If I didn't join, I wouldn't have a friend at all. Katie, Selena started carefully. I never meant to hurt you. I always thought you were happy that I was doing so well. Why should I be happy for you, Katie snapped. When we were younger, we cared about each other. As equals. But then you got so thin and so popular. Why should that make me happy? Because you were my friend, Selena choked out. I never knew you felt this way. That's the whole point, Katie insisted angrily. If you were a good friend, you would have known, you would have cared, but you don't care about anything except being a star and getting everyone's attention. Selena glanced quickly at Danny. He hadn't moved. He couldn't help her. She had to calm Katie down by herself. And then you wanted to leave, Katie ranted. You never even told me you wanted to go away to college. You thought you could just get a scholarship and take off? I bet you didn't even think about what would happen to me. Selena stared hard at her friend, realizing how disturbed Katie was. And as Katie met Selena's gaze, she seemed to deflate. Her eyes lost their fire. Her whole body slumped. I thought I could stop you, Katie murmured. I thought if I could scare you enough, you'd drop out of the play, and we could go back to being friends. Oh, Katie, Selena began, reaching to hug her friend. But it didn't work, Katie yelled, pushing Selena away. You kept on acting. 
and you kept on seeing all your new friends and boyfriends. You didn't even care if people got hurt. You just wanted your precious scholarship. Selena's fear dissolved, replaced by anger. Are you saying you hurt Allison? she demanded. On purpose? I didn't mean to hurt her, Katie replied. I thought you would be sitting there. I wanted to scare you, but it didn't work. She sighed. I tried everything, Selena. Selena swallowed hard. What about Jake? Selena asked in a whisper, a horrible suspicion growing in her mind. You didn't... Jake was too nosy, Katie said calmly, coldly. You should never have told him about the stalker, Selena. It made him start poking around. Then he found the stickers in my locker. In your locker? You found them in Jake's locker because he took them out of mine. He shouldn't have done that. He made a big mistake, but it made things easy for me. What do you mean? Selena whispered. Katie sneered. I persuaded Jake to come up here. Nobody is as comfortable up here as I am. He didn't have a chance. You, you pushed him? I couldn't let him tell you what he found out about me, Katie replied. Afterward, I felt sad. I mean, Jake had been a good friend of ours all those years. But things changed, Selena. Katie rose quickly to her feet. Selena stared at her in horror. A killer, Selena thought numbly. I'm trapped up here with a killer. Katie, please believe me, she begged, pressing her back against the cabinet. Please believe how sorry I am. I do believe you, Katie replied, but it's too late. Selena pressed herself against the cabinet, trying to make herself disappear. Katie, no. I'm grateful to you for making it so easy, Katie said without any emotion at all. I wasn't expecting you tonight. I thought only Danny would show up, but this makes it so much better. Were you the one who asked Danny to come here? I'm a good actress too, Selena, Katie sneered. I disguised my voice. I told him I was you. It was simple. Katie, let's go down to the stage. We can talk about everything. We can get you the help you need. I'm sure there's a way to work things out. No way, Katie cried. I've already got things worked out. It will look as if you and Danny came up here and had an accident. Everyone will think you died together, just like the real Romeo and Juliet. Katie lifted her heavy flashlight in the air. She moved quickly across the small room to Selena. Chapter 30 With a low cry, Selena hurtled forward. She threw herself over Danny and scrambled to the door on the far side of the prop room. Please don't hurt me, Katie, she pleaded. Forget it, Katie replied. There's nowhere for you to go. She swung the flashlight. Selena cried out as the heavy metal connected with her arm. She felt a sharp, numbing pain. As Katie raised the flashlight to strike again, Selena jumped back, grabbed for the doorknob. She swung the door open and froze in fear. She had forgotten where the second doorway led. It opened directly onto the catwalk. So high above the stage, the narrow metal walkway stretched before Selena like a tightrope. Dizziness swept over her. She started to turn back, but Katie blocked her way. What's the matter, Selena? Katie taunted. Change your mind? Katie, let me back in. Katie laughed. You've always been afraid of heights, ever since we were little. Yes, Selena sobbed. You know I am. That makes it perfect, Katie declared. You got scared and fell off the catwalk. No one will be surprised. Katie, no. Katie swung the flashlight. Selena dodged away, took a step back. Katie pulled back her arm and swung the flashlight. Selena had no choice. She stepped out onto the catwalk, slipped, went over the railing, felt herself falling, and realized she was plunging to her death. Chapter 31 No! Uttering a desperate wail of horror, she shot up her arms, grabbed the thin rod of a railing, caught it with her right hand, held on, held on, held on despite the searing pain shooting down her arm held on until she could grasp the railing with her left hand, too. Then she hoisted herself back onto the narrow walkway, gasping for breath, her whole body shuddering and shaking. Selena took a step back, then another. Katie followed, the flashlight raised in front of her. Selena took another step, another, backing up on trembling legs, backing up, trying not to look down, staring at the raised flashlight in Katie's hand. Oh, Selena gasped as she felt something cold against her back. She turned and saw that she had reached the end of the catwalk. 
There was nowhere to go now, nowhere but down. Selena's eyes were drawn to the stage below. She gasped. It was so far down. Another wave of dizziness swept over her, and she had to press her hands against the wall to keep from tumbling over. Scared you're going to fall? Katie asked nastily. You should be. She took one more step toward Selena. Then she swung the flashlight at Selena's head. Selena screamed and ducked. She lost her balance on the narrow catwalk and fell again and landed hard on her stomach, straddling the catwalk, her arms hugging it tightly. Katie laughed. Please stop. Please stop. Please, Selena begged. Okay, Katie agreed. I'll stop. Selena stared up in surprise. Katie set down the flashlight and knelt beside Selena. She began to pull on Selena's arms, prying them away from the catwalk. No, Selena pleaded. Let go, Katie ordered. She pulled harder. Harder. Selena closed her eyes and held on, her arms and legs wrapped tightly around the metal surface. You're stronger than I thought, Katie muttered, but you won't be able to hold on if you're unconscious. She picked up the flashlight again and raised it over her head. Selena shut her eyes as Katie brought the flashlight down. Chapter 32 Selena waited for the pain, for the flashlight to come crashing down on her head. She shut her eyes and waited. Waited. When she opened her eyes, Katie knelt over her, the flashlight raised. But now Katie was staring at the other end of the catwalk. Selena turned her head to see Eddie at the top of the ladder. Put down the flashlight, he told Katie softly. Go away, Katie snarled. This has nothing to do with you. Let her go, Eddie said gently. He began to inch out on a catwalk toward the girls. Leave us alone, Katie cried. She rose to her feet. I'll take care of you too, she muttered. Don't be stupid, Katie, Eddie called. You don't want to kill three people. You know you don't want to kill Selena and me. You don't know what I want, Katie replied in an angry, trembling voice. She stood up and took a step toward Eddie. Then why don't you explain, Eddie called to her. I will, Katie sneered, if you'll come closer. Eddie took another step toward her. Now they were only a few feet apart. Selena felt too afraid to move. Horrified, she watched as Katie and Eddie faced each other. Katie was so intent on Eddie that she seemed to have forgotten Selena. Put down the flashlight, Katie, Eddie instructed her gently. Let's go down to the stage. You'd like that, Katie shot back. That way you'd be in control. But up here, I'm in control. Without warning, she swung the flashlight at Eddie's head. Selena shrieked, and Eddie ducked. He thrust his hands out and windmilled his arms. He hit the railing on the catwalk. Looked like he was about to topple over it. He teetered on the edge. It's all over, Selena thought. Katie is going to kill us all. Then she saw Eddie regain his balance. He grabbed for the flashlight. Missed as Katie stepped away. With an angry grunt, she swung the flashlight again. This time, Eddie slipped. He went down with a yell, landing on the beam. Katie swung the flashlight again. Selena's scream drowned out the loud thunk as the metal flashlight found its target. Eddie ducked back, losing his balance. He slipped off the beam, now hanging onto it by his fingertips, his body swaying above the stage. Katie began to chop at Eddie's hands with a flashlight. He cried out, but still held on. He's going to die, Selena realized, unless I help him. But could she do it? She took a deep breath, then began to crawl toward Katie. Katie whacked at Eddie's fingers again and again. Selena heard Eddie's cries of pain. She knew he couldn't hold on much longer. She couldn't be careful any more. She had to get there fast. She forced herself to stand. Without looking down, she dove toward Katie. Katie's flashlight was raised high in the air, ready to come down again on Eddie's hands. Selena grabbed it. Let go, Katie screeched. She tried to pull away from Selena's grasp and lost her balance. Selena yanked on the flashlight with all her strength. It flew out of Katie's hands and clattered onto the stage far below. Katie grasped Selena's arms with both hands and for a moment the two girls wrestled, teetering on the narrow walk. Selena couldn't balance. She knew that in another moment both she and Katie would fall off, fall onto the hard stage. And then she was falling, falling backward, Katie on top of her. She seemed to fall forever, waiting for the stage to smash into her, waiting for blackness. 
Huh? Selina felt the catwalk under her back, a crushing weight on her stomach. She gazed up. Katie was sprawled on top of her. Whoa, Eddie cried out as he landed on top of the both of them, pinning them to the safety of the catwalk. Selina couldn't breathe. Let me go, Katie cried, struggling furiously. Let me go. Hold on, Selina, Eddie cried. He climbed to his feet and, pulling Katie roughly up, dragged her along the catwalk. They disappeared into the prop room. Selina stared after them, her body numb with shock. After a moment, she climbed shakily to her feet. Without Katie, the catwalk seemed safe. Walking on it seemed easy. Slowly, she made her way to the prop room. Eddie had pulled off Danny's ropes and was using them to tie up Katie. How did you know I was here? Selina asked Eddie. You sounded so upset on the phone, I took a guess you might come here. Lucky guess, Selina cried. With a burst of emotion, she ran over and wrapped her arms around Eddie. She kissed him. He held her close. When he pulled back, she saw the startled expression on his face. You're not acting now, are you? he demanded. Selina pressed her face against his. No, I'm not acting, she replied. Thank goodness this show is over. Hey, don't say that, Eddie protested. He slid his arm around her. This may only be Act One. This has been a Nightfall Audiobooks production of The Secret Admirer by R.L. Stein, a Fear Street novel, Book 36. This is Chris again with Nightfall Audiobooks. Thank you very much for joining me in my production of The Secret Admirer by R.L. Stein. I knew it was Katie during editing. I usually edit the book as I narrate it. I usually record early in the morning and then I edit late in the evening. And I do that so that I don't get too far behind in my editing. One time I had two books to edit at the same time. That was a drag because I was recording two books at the same time, too. One in the morning, one at night. That was a huge, huge drag. I'm not a big fan of editing. I do it, but whatever. It's my least favorite part of this entire process. My favorite part of this show is after the files are all edited together, I get to figure out how I want to lay them out in each episode and how many parts each book is going to be. That's my favorite part. I don't know why, but it's a lot of fun for me to do. I knew it was Katie halfway through the book when she kept on insisting that Selena leave the show and that she quit. And I'm like, I know it's not a guy because it's not Danny. And even though Danny has a beef with Jake, it's not him. It's not Eddie because Eddie is in total awe of Selena. So he's not going to like stalk her or anything. He certainly wouldn't send her poison ivy. And Katie knows Selena because they're best friends. So she knows to send her poison ivy. She knows how to get things into her locker. Eddie brings up something very interesting in that he references the prom queen and how he was a senior when Selena was younger, so probably in 10th grade or so, because he had his eye on her for two years. So that means that the prom queen, which is book 15, takes place two years previous to the secret admirer, which is book 36. So does that mean that Every 20 books or so, two years goes by? See, it's interesting to think about this, because I never have thought about this. I grew up with the beginning to the middle of the Fear Street series, and those characters all interact with each other pretty well. David Metcalf, Suki Thomas, Dina Martinson, and Jade Smith, they all kind of move in their own little orbits. Reva Dalby, we don't know about anybody moving on to college until we hit Silent Night 3 and we discover that Reva is going to Smith College. That means she's still on Shady Side, but she's nowhere near Shady Side High. So that means that there are new kids in play. So when I get a recommendation to read a book, like I did with The Secret Admirer, this was a recommendation from a listener. Thank you very much, by the way. This was a fun book to read. When I read books I haven't read before, I get a whole different set of characters. Like in The Rich Girl, Sydney and Emma, they see a character from the book Cat. I mean, it makes sense that there are 52 of these books, okay? In the core Fear Street series, there are 52 novels. And it makes perfect sense 
that you would have, you know, 15 to 20 stories with the same group of high school seniors and stuff. And then they would obviously age out, go into college and things. But Shadyside High is not going to close. So you will get another group of, of kids to, uh, you know, to interact with and to have fun with and things like that and to tell different stories with. This is a cool idea. And I like that this book got me really thinking about the time frame of Fear Street and how all of these different characters play with each other. As far as this book goes, I mean, I read The Prom Queen. That had stuff that had aspects of theater in it. I'm not a big theater guy. Friends of mine are. That's okay. I've been to a bunch of plays, and that's fine. I enjoy it, but it's not for me. It's not something that I do. It's not my calling. I don't have any interaction with a the theater. I don't have any desire to. For me to read a book based entirely around someone who is in the theater, it's kind of boring for me. But whatever. So that's okay. Good descriptions. Good stalking. Nicely done by Katie trying to get back at her friend because she's jealous of her friend's success. That makes sense. It's petty, but it makes sense. I get it. It's high school kids. The only thing that didn't really ring true was Katie's accusation that Selena was only chasing guys. And that's not really true. She went out with Danny for a few months. They broke up. She took a break. And then she started seeing Eddie. But she wasn't really dating Eddie. I guess the part that really ticked off Katie was when Selena made a date with Eddie and she forgot she was having a sleepover date with Katie. I mean, Katie should have just said, hey, that's not cool. What are you doing? We have plans. Do I recommend this book? Not really. You can skip it. It's not very eventful. It's not very scary. It's a fun read. It's kind of popcorn, but it's not great. I've read better Fear Street novels. This is one I did not read before. And if you want to read a good one that I had not read before, The Rich Girl. Perfect. I would skip The Secret of My Room. I'm glad I did it, but it's not that good. So if you want to get in touch with me, write me an email at nightfallaudiobooks at gmail.com. I'm also on YouTube at Nightfall Audiobooks. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. What should I do next? Tell your friends, tell your mom, tell whoever you think would like to listen to me tell them tales from R.L. Stein. So thank you very much for listening, and I will see you next time.